thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, I know it's a shortened week, but sometimes that feels like an even longer week. So I do appreciate that. We did have some extra time for attendees to join. Again, welcome, happy Friday Eve. My name is Kristen Alexander, an application specialist at TransFinder. Thank you all for joining. This is our fifth webinar. How crazy is that, our fifth webinar? Uh, today's topic is cleaning the vehicle, something that all of the attendees have been super excited about. Um, so without further ado, I am going to introduce TransFinder's CEO, Tony Civitella. Thank you, Kristen. All right, I am unmuted, ready to go. Excellent. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's finally getting nice and warm. It is a shortened week. It feels like a, when it's a shortened week, it looks like it's even uh, trying to pack everything in a few days, right? So again, thank you. Uh, it is our fifth uh, uh, fifth webinar here with NIAF, which is great. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, topic. Of course, it's, a lot of people have been asking about how they should be cleaning their buses. So it's a big uh, topic today. In today's panel, we have uh, an executive from uh, Keppel District Transportation Authority, CDTA. Uh, they're about public transportation and and these guys know how to keep their buses clean. So the CDTA and uh, again, thank you, Jonathan, for being part of this, uh, this, being part of the panel. And thank you for being a client of using our City Finder app. It's exciting. Let's face it, Jonathan, you're awesome. But the rest of the panel, they're great too. They're all experts on this issue. So I can't wait to hear really a lot of people talking about this new normal on how to keep things cleaned and also how everyone's being pre getting prepared to reopen schools, of course. And so this is this is a the big topic, right? We're all talking about it, not just in New York State, but across the country. We're all talking about this. I uh, want to just a little bit of reminder. These webinars are always being recorded. Uh, they're always available and they're free, of course. You can find uh, the re a recorded uh, part of this webinar um, off our website at transfunder.com, and there's tons of things there. That website's just getting rearranged. We have so many recorded webinars and documents, which you're, so many of you guys are sharing with us. So thank you. And, uh, you know, it's about how do we reopen now schools? And that's been the number one topic. Speaking of reopening schools, uh, so I want to know that we always believe that communication is something that's more important now, that just keep communicating with parents and the community, and even within the staff, uh, we're, we made a decision to extend our offer of a free uh, product, it's called Stop Finder, it's an app for a communication app. So we are extending that free offer till December 31st. So please, if you want to learn more about it, send email to freestopfinder at transfinder.com and we'll take care of you. And by the way, you don't have to be a client to benefit from this product. Again, it's fully, it's totally free for you guys, and it's powerful two-way communication, so you can communicate with parents, staff, whatever you need to communicate. It's built in to our infrastructure, so love, love to, to talk more about how it could help you guys with the communication. But listen, I don't want to talk too much longer. You guys have so much we want to talk about today. Dave, uh, Christopher, thank you again with partnering with us and with, with NIAF, of course, being together, it's a great uh, partnership. And I wanna thank you for your leadership and and just keep things going. And really these are challenging time, but uh, leaders like yourselves is what's making a big difference. The whole the whole state is looking at people like yourselves and you're able to get everyone together. You know, one person doesn't have the answer, but you start putting three, four, five, 10, 20 people. Now all of a sudden you got some lot of smart people and uh, that's how it works. So again, thank you so much. Now I want to pass it over to, to Dave Christopher. Again, Dave, thank you very much. Tony, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate this platform. Uh, for, for the audience out there, this is an every other week, every other Thursday opportunity for us. So, uh, you know, look forward to it, uh, even though I'm a little late getting the invite out like I was today. I apologize for that. But uh, every other week we uh, uh, have the opportunity to work with the TransFinder folks and put together a uh, 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 webinar on some kind of a topic that's important to people. And this was one that uh, has been coming up quite often uh, with the uh, various webinars that we've, we've produced and, and participated in. So uh, we got a panel together to speak to this, which I think uh, you'll enjoy. And uh, again, Tony, I appreciate this opportunity. So uh, I'm going to introduce the panel. Uh, 
uh, Bill Harvey. Uh, you all know Bill Harvey. He's been on a couple previous uh, uh, webinars. He's from Honeyard Falls Lima, transportation director and the uh, security director. Also, uh, we've invited Jason Johnson, who's the fleet manager at uh, uh, Horsehead Central School District. Jason's the president of the uh, Head New York Head Mechanics Association. Thanks, Jason, for doing this. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan Serger from Capital District Transit Authority. Uh, Tony mentioned Jonathan a little earlier. Jonathan, uh, we we've, uh, appreciate you coming on board too. Uh, I wanted to get a transit person on because I know you folks have been knee deep in this uh, disinfecting uh, business already. So uh, Jonathan, thanks for coming. And also Jeff, Jeff Jones from Hilliard. Uh, Jeff is a, a certified environmental service technician trainer and an infection control and cleaning industry uh, certification as well. So uh, he's got a lot of experts and uh, you know, down in the weeds, if you will, type expertise that I think is gonna be important for people. So uh, thank you, Jeff, for doing this as well. So I think we've got a good panel here who uh, will be able to answer most of our questions and, and keep the conversation going. Speaking of conversation, here's Rick. Uh, uh, Rick is the moderator, and you all know Rick from previous uh, webinars. He does a great job keeping that conversation going. So, uh, Rick, I'll turn it over to you, and uh, we'll start the uh, webinar. And uh, uh, thank you for doing this for us. Cool. Oh, you're muted, Rick. Can't hear you. This is what my wife wishes that she could have on me all the time. You know, you I made a big deal, by the way, before we even got on saying, guys, make sure you watch your mute button so you don't do what I just did. So there you go. Uh, and uh, complete transparency. Thank you to all the panelists for joining us. We are going to have a great conversation. Um, I just wanted to uh, highlight if you have any questions, you guys may hear um, Kristen's voice coming in periodically uh, with a question that she's going to be uh, seeing from the field. So if um, you hear that voice, it's not me uh, throwing my voice, it'll be Kristen popping in with some uh, some questions from uh, attendees. Um, I just want to start off, we'll start with Bill, go down the line, Bill, Jonathan, Jeffrey, and uh, Jason. If you could just kind of share, first of all, your job duties, you know, your, you know, what you do and a little bit about your organization and, and how you've had to adapt already to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, so Bill, a little bit about what you do and, and how you've adjusted. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I'm the, uh... Director of Transportation and Security for our local school district here, Honey Falls, Lima. Um, and of course, uh, like many others, we're deeply impacted by this pandemic, um, have shifted operations to uh, all sorts of other support roles other than moving students and uh, delivering uh, products, meals, instructional materials. Um, also on the flip side though, it's allowed me and my security role to uh, be involved in different uh, reviewing safety plans for distributing items at the schools and having students come in to clean out lockers. So um, it has also offered me an opportunity to dig very deeply into the topic of today, and that's how do we keep our buses clean and safe. So I'm excited to be here for this. Great. Jonathan. Hi everyone, John Scherzer, Director of Marketing here at CDTA. Uh, I'm responsible for our public messaging, um, ad campaigns, and also our partnerships with third parties, collegiate universities, hospitals, uh, and business development, making sure they have access to their own ID cards and our cards, uh, as well as run some of our non-traditional transit programs. We have a bike share program, uh, we coordinate with a car sharing program, and we have an on-demand service now that is kind of like Uber Pool. Um, so you can imagine some of the challenges that we've run into. I would say that April was a mess. Um, you know, about every three or four days, we were coming up with a new plan and trying to figure out both the safety and the service components of it. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed out of the first month was we had about 85% participation from the operators and, mecha and mechanics, uh, maintenance technicians as we call them, and that was really something to see. Great. Thank you so much, John. Jeffrey. Hi, um, good morning, Jeff Jones. From, I work for Hilliard, um, account manager out of the Victor location. I cover uh, Western New York, up into Buffalo, Niagara County. A um, little bit about Hilliard, um, we're probably the unfamiliar ones on, on the panel. Uh, we are a 117 year old chemical manufacturing company out of St. Joe, Missouri. Uh, we make everything from hand sanitizer to your disinfectants to gym floor care. Um, you know, 
degreasers, brush wash, all that kind of stuff. So we have a, um, a plethora of uh, manufacturing background in the chemical world, um, but our main goal is to help our customers provide clean, safe, healthy environments for their students and their staff uh, to come into our buildings. And you know, we were talking on the panel that this is a big area that we're already into. Um, our primary business is the K-12 market. Um, we just never really dabbled in the transportation side until really COVID has really struck us hard. Uh, we've been really trying to help our customers get through um, all the different changes that TDC is putting out with all the different guidelines. They fluctuate a lot. Um, help them get through some of the supply chain issues that the entire country is having. Um, being able to get supplies and uh, get here timely as best we can. Um, so it's just a great opportunity. I hope I can provide some information um, on my background and my training um, to discuss um, how we stop the spread of infection and how we can really try and keep those kids getting to school um, as safe as possible. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Jason. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name again is Jason Johnson. I'm the acting president of the New York Head Mechanics Association. I also am the service manager for Horsehead Central School District. Um, I look over the service needs for our district as well as another school district close to us. Um, in my role as head mechanic or as president of the United New York Head Mechanics Association, uh, we have I try to make sure we have monthly meetings throughout the whole state with our head mechanics. Um, I'm trying to make sure that we all get the information that we need to have as we are considered boots on the ground. Um, our mechanics are out servicing the buses, making sure they're taken care of, and, and the inside of the buses is pretty important. As the service needs are checking seats, checking seat belts. So our guys' hands are on everything that these kids are on every day. Um, it's pretty important also that we make sure that we're safe while we're inside the buses. So I know Dave and I have talked a lot and uh, he's asked me to join you guys. This is a great thing for us as our organization. And uh, we're just trying, I'm just trying to make sure that we get the best information to all the mechanics in New York State. It's just very important in my role to make sure that happens. That's outstanding. Thank you so much, Jason. I'm going to start off with um, with Jason at CDTA because I think in a way you guys are kind of our canary in the coal mine, so to speak. You know, the school buses haven't been rolling yet, um, but you guys never had to. You guys never missed a beat. So and you mentioned it's been flexible from changes, but can you give us a little bit of a sense of the process that CDTA undertakes to keep their buses clean, disinfected? Is there changes during you know is it, is it always the same exact type of cleaning process or does it go deep cleaning at certain points and a more you know superficial kind of cleaning probably the wrong word but a lighter cleaning give us a little sense of the tdta process that may be beneficial for school districts yeah sure no problem i think um you know jason touched on the fact that it's constantly changing i, I think that's been the biggest challenge is you know, CDC guidelines for 60 days were, were clear that it was transmissible by being on surfaces. And now in the last week and a half, now it's human to human contact. So, you know, that's just one example of a lot of change you've seen. I think the reality is, is there was a lot less frequency going on prior to the pandemic. And I don't think that in a negative way. I think that most transit systems in a very particular way, they, they do the cleaning process. I think it was very routine across our industry, but you could have gone anywhere from a week to two weeks prior to the pandemic between a deep clean. Now in our current situation, much like some of the stuff you might've seen in the papers about the MTA, you're, you're doing stuff daily. Um, but you know, it, with every disinfecting call, um, there's a bunch of things we're doing. So we have a, a deep clean. So the deep clean occurs uh, in, in a daily circumstance where you wipe down, sealing the floors, every corner. Uh, it's done by a hospital grade sanitizer with disinfectant. And that's really done in our garage as the buses come in for the end of their transit day. We have also sent people out into the field. So, you know, we're, we're running about 60% of our service complement right now because our general ridership is about 55,000 every weekday. We're seeing about 29 to 30,000 right now. But you need to keep in mind that those numbers have to be split across what is effectively the same number of buses. Social distancing requires probably a maximum in our industry of about 15 or 20 people now per bus, where you could have packed 45 to 55 into a regular bus. Um, there is also a spray function that we do as well. That's not as, as it's kind of an add-on to the deep clean, 
Um, so they hit all the key touch points with that spray. That takes about a half hour to dry. So between those two activities, you're seeing something done every day. Um, it may not be the same two at the same time every day, but we're going through. And then additionally in the field, um, you know, we have what we call layover locations. And those layovers are at the beginning and the end of a route. And we have our maintenance technicians literally driving out into the field and doing wipe downs there as well. So I think you're just trying to keep up with the expectation of your customer, whether it's a pupil or whether it's somebody going to work at a hospital or at a supermarket, the expectation is way higher. And I think that's what everyone on this call needs to deal with is that normal is, doesn't exist. The, the, and I don't like calling it new normal either, but the reality is, is the way you do business in 2021, 20, 22, 23, is not going to look like 2019. So the first thing I would say is you always wanna keep that mind open and have those abilities to find different things. But you're going to need to A, be constantly cleaning and sanitizing, uh, and then B, having to prove that uh, to some degree, I think, it, in, in this industry. You have to be able to showcase that it is working that way. Um, you know, masks are the, are the biggest challenge we see. You know, the executive order kind of pushes you to want to wear one, but it doesn't let you get arrested if you don't. Um, we certainly don't have a transit police force here in the capital region, so we're not in a position to do that. So that's been the biggest kind of PR challenge, but mm -hmm. the cleaning is just constantly being upgraded. Um, we're even looking at UV lighting that kills uh, germs and viruses too. So I think the consistency of it, deep cleaning, and then tiered additional cleaning opportunities is really the, the way we've seen it gonna work, and I think it's gonna work most for everyone. Um, Bill, you look like you wanna say something. Uh, be yeah, you I was wondering, Rick, if I could ask Jonathan maybe just to, dive a little bit deeper into the um, into the the disinfecting with the um, with the lights the UV light um, that has been a topic of discussion on our some of our um, webinars in the past um, can you enlighten us a little further on that I wish I could it's very new I know that the MTA is looking to deploy it pretty soon they've had a couple of tests we have vendors coming in and out of here every week now with a new product. Um, the spray products are kind of new, but there's even stronger product that I think we're on order in August for. Um, but I think they're just looking at all the different ways. I don't have the uh, technical detail of what the UV lighting program does or how it works, um, but it is a new avenue they've used, which obviously requires a lot less labor and people power. So they want to try to figure out if it is viable. Um. So I want, and we're not going to really focus on social distancing, but since you guys are doing, because that is an issue that seems to come up in every single webinar is how do you social distance on a bus? Since you are doing it, give us a little bit of a, can you give me a little bit of, bit of a sense of what that looks like? It's not fun. Um, again, because of where we are, I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of different transit agencies have done a lot of different things. Some of them have, I think a barrier is a no brainer. Uh, that's the first thing. It wasn't a quick add-on in our industry, but the operator barrier is quickly becoming an integral piece of the transit operation. I would even suggest that this group, particularly school buses, um, there's going to be some delineation between the operator and the students I think that's going to be wanted. It probably wouldn't be as robust as what we're going to have in a transit scenario. Obviously, some of the kids age dependent are going to need assistance and um, how that's going to play out, I don't know. But I think that some form of mental, at the bare minimum, separation between the onboard operator and the students is going to be important. For us, um, some people are carting off seats. So if you have a bus row with three seats in a row, the middle seat is inaccessible. Some agencies have tied down their um, kind of disabled seating at the front of the bus. Um, but for those people that do have uh, accessible needs, they can use it. But for the most part, you're trying to direct customers away. We are rear boarding only right now. So we're not even collecting fares at this point. Um, and again, for us, not necessarily for, for the pupil you know, connection here, we're going to need that separation. We need that front door opened again so that we can actually collect the fares and, and help the social distancing because part of the problem with social distancing right now, again, is everyone's boarding through one door in the back. So you're already you know, bunching them in already. Uh, and as I said earlier, you know, we're about 45 to 50 on a bus. I can't see us moving forward with anything more than 20 for the foreseeable future once we get back to regular levels. 
So Jason and Jeff, either one of you guys jump in or both of you. I um, I want to get, you know, I don't normally say this, but uh, we want to get into the weeds a little bit about what you can use, what you can't use, best practices. Can either one or both of you guys tell us, because I know people who are on this uh, webinar are really wanting to know what they can what they can actually use in their buses. Can you guys give us some sort of insights on that? Jeff, you want to go first? How, how far in the weeds do you want to get? I think, um, I think it'll be useful. Go for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm just touching on, on John's point about the UV. Uh, UV has been used in the hospitals for many years now. Um, the, the challenges with it is the time it takes to actually do it. Can you get into all touch, you know, touch surfaces wrapped around a, a handle and things like that? So there's some challenges with UV. You have to stop the person go in. It has to be down for a certain amount of time before you can go in and actually remove it off that bus or remove it out of the room. Uh, so there is a time standpoint, and as long as you have the av availability to um, have the time for that bus to be down and disinfected properly, um, a lot of the time for the UV material to work, it is a viable option and something that's out there. Um, my big thing is that, that I promote and that um, I recommend to my customers is proper cleaning um, and then high quality touch point disinfection. There's a, there's a lot of good you know, reasoning behind that. I'm not a big fan of just disinfecting everything. A lot of disinfectants, especially when you get into the ones that are stronger kill claims, the surface needs to be cleaned first. So, for example, if I'm using a 1 to 10 bleach ratio, which has a kill claim against COVID-19, that surface needs to be clean of all visible soil. So if a kid goes there and touches it with, and has a handprint on there, you can't bleach that out and then get that out and have a kill claim with it. So you always need a pre-clean. Um, and if you're cleaning appropriately, you're essentially removing those germs off of that surface anyways. With a, you know, I would recommend a best practice would be using microfiber cloth. Um, and then allowing yeah, well, that proper dwell uh, time. Slow it down a little bit. Like you got a lot of Slow yeah. it down a little bit for me. Not as I said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So again, the big point is, is pre-cleaning um, and then going in through and disinfecting your touch points, um, your handrails, your tops of seats, things like that. But if you're cleaning appropriately, um, you're removing those germs off that, that surface. That surface can essentially be as clean as if you were to disinfect it. Um, we can get all the ins and outs of that as well. Um, but always clean with microfiber is most important. You never want to cross-contaminate by using a cotton cloth or something like that. Are you washing? I think that's a good place to start. Oh, I I want you're you're touching it. Yeah, so, yeah. So microfiber. Do you wash that? I don't know. I mean, you can tell who cleans. Yeah. That so you would wash the micro the microfiber cloth, or it can be completely laundered. Um, you don't wash them with any bleach or anything like that. Just a standard standard laundry detergent. Um, they're able to be laundered, you know, a certain number of times. Our cloths can be laundered 200 times. You know, as long as you don't damage them um, with any fabric softener or bleach, they're reusable. Um, when that microfiber, you know, for those who don't know, it's got little microscopic hooks on it. It holds on and retains those that dirt and those germs that are on that surface. You use a simple multi-purpose cleaner along with that, and it'll pull the germs off. Um, and allow you to have that surface be clean. If it's a high frequency touch point, uh, we just go through and, and we disinfect that with our disinfectant, hospital grade disinfectant with an EPA registered kill claim against the virus that we choose. Um, and then we reuse this through the same process again. You know, it, it speeds up our cleaning process, um, reduces our exposure to caustic chemicals, keeps our people safe, keeps kids safe when they come on the buses, especially if we do it before someone walks on. You know, disinfectants are pretty caustic items. so. So Jeff, uh, and then I'm going to go to you, Jason. Jeff, um, it sounds to me just hearing you talk, you've been living in this world for way before COVID-19. The world just kind of yeah. caught up with you a little bit. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jason, piggyback on that. Go ahead. Tell me, uh, you know, your so, sense of best practices here. So I, I want to make sure, you know, I've listened to a lot of great uh, of these webinars lately, and you know, one thing I'm getting is uh, getting out of all these is there are a thousand different ways to treat this. Um, everyone has a product that they know someone that sells this product. Um, I think we need to make sure for one, that it's gonna be okayed by the school district itself as in your facilities. I mean, that would be one of the first places. Then two, is it gonna be DOT approved to be on the bus? Um, what I'm also finding is, is we have a third part here of this, and this is, is anybody gonna have an allergic reaction to what they're putting inside that bus? So are we making an alternative for, okay, so we start putting this on the buses to clean and there is that dwell time, 
is it something that's going to cause a reaction with someone? So we have to have maybe another part on the side saying, okay, this is what we're going to spray, but if we have any reactions and we're going to have, you know, we're going to have everything about this product to let people know what's in it. But we need to make sure we have something on the side to say, if anybody has any issues with this, we still want to clean, but we need to make sure it's safe. Um, I can, think, I, can I jump in on that? Can I jump in yeah, on that, Jason? I think that's a, yeah. uh, that's an excellent point. That's kind of what my big premise is with not over disinfecting spaces, especially if you're doing it before um, students are getting on a bus or your public transportation is happening, you know, um, because EPA registered disinfectants are registered as a pesticide, right? They're caustic. So if I have a 10 minute hospital grade disinfectant with a 10 minute dwell time on the surface, you know, a kid could have a skin reaction to it. We're using these products every day in schools. Your, your school district at Horsehead is probably using an EPA registered disinfectant, right? But if we're cleaning with a, you know, something that's a lot safer, a green shield certified product, um, especially if it's hydrogen peroxide based, um, you can have some better effectiveness to remove those germs off the surface where we're using a proper tool like microfiber without having to put kids in harm's way and then do your proper disinfection after the kids get on the bus. And the other part to that is, if I have a, a space, a bus, let's say that's disinfected at the end of the night, and your driver gets in there, they breathe bio burden, whether it's COVID or anything else. As soon as they walk onto that bus and they breathe air in there, it's, it's over with. There's no more disinfecting going on because you've already contaminated that space. So let's make sure that our touch points where I can have touch someone that sneezes on that handrail, if I touch that surface and then touch my face, whether it's COVID or the flu, we want to make sure those areas are best clean and best maintained, you know, versus a floor of the box. Or, you know, in our world, normally in the K-12 world, is floors of the bathroom. There's no reason to disinfect the floor of the bathroom. You know, it's pointless. You want to disinfect the flush valves or the sink, you know, the faucet knobs. So that's just something to add into it. And then making sure you have, like you said, the SDS sheets on, available on hand at all times. That's important as well. The only, the only thing I want to make sure we add to this is you said there is a, you know, we want to make sure that it sits there. The minute someone walks into that bus and either breathes or does something that's going to change the effect of it. We want to make sure as mechanics, on the mechanic side, the transportation supervisors, and most of them will do this, they want to make sure that the mechanics know before they grab them for a service or they grab them for a brake problem. Because we have da uh, daily reports coming in, one after the other sometimes, maybe services. We've got uh, school districts working two shifts, some of them three shifts throughout New York State. We want to make sure that they're on the same page. I think everyone has to be on the same page. This bus needs 10 minutes or 15 minutes of doing nothing. Closed door lockdown. Um, I think that's going to be the big thing because if we have drivers getting off the bus, handing the slip, and the mechanic goes out to grab it for a service, it kind of disturbs the whole process. Um, so, so a couple takeaways. One is it would seem like you'd want to do business with uh vendors or or uh, men uh, or, or suppliers who got experience uh providing school buildings with these cleaners because we know those would be okay to be around kids i think that's one thing to keep in mind as you go forward uh as opposed to i'm guessing as a result of this COVID crisis, there's probably going to be a lot of vendors who are going to say, hey, buy my product, I'm in business now. And you want to make sure whatever you're using is, you know, okay to be around kids. So that would be a takeaway from my, a, from my view. The, the other thing, point, is, to Jason's point about, you know, making sure the bus has had that downtime, that's part of, I would think, a process you'd want to put in place where you'd somehow tag that bus out for X amount of time. It's just been cleaned and somehow you designate it with a tag or something. So somebody jumps on it, they know that it's it, that it has to be, you know, down for 10 minutes or whatever the time is. I guess my question is how long, how long would a bus have to be, you know, uh, out of service after cleaning? Did, did I hear like 10, 15 minutes? Is that what I'm hearing? Or? It, de it depends. It depends on what your wet time is based on your label. Um, again, we, I call it wet time. It's just easier. The major still call it dwell time. Wet time is just easier. It has to be the actual contact. And um, the hard part is you can't just spray it and let it go because if you have air circulation, a window left open, you got to visibly see that seat be wet for 10 minutes. You know, someone checking that space. Um, so go in, you know, at minute eight, and they're still and it's still wet, and that's kind of ideal. Then you can walk off, close it down, and, and let it go. 
Um, a lot of, you have to read your label as well. You, some chemicals require a, a, a water rinse or a wipe down after the disinfectant dries even. So depending on how caustic of a disinfectant you're using determines what you need to do after that dwell time is over with. Um, so again, it gets, you, you have to be really, you know, get with somebody that knows what they're talking about, what products they're using. Um, you can cut your dwell time down or your wet time down with using, you know, something like bleach or some other chlorine base or even a, you know, a heavier duty clotinary clot ammonia. Uh, but you, those products require a, a water rinse and a pre-clean. So just making sure you're knowing what you're using and you're educating yourself on your label and whoever you're dealing with knows, you know, the products ins and outs and, and how to kind of handle those. Again, that's why I also recommend a, more of a cleaning aspect and making sure you get a better clean because we don't have all that labor time to pre-clean, disinfect, and then clean again at the end of the you know at the end of the, the wet time. So if we're cleaning good, focusing on those touch points cuts down our labor time, increases our efficiency overall, um, and still has the same effect of removing those germs off the surface. How about the foggers? Are those foggers? Do they need a lot of downtime, or are they? I know Bill, you've got one, right? Are you using it, or do they have to be? Uh, yeah, so it's a specific. It's specific to the chemical. Um, I think so. you know, it, it, it's you can you can miss the product on if it's allowed to be there. The the chemical that the bill is using has a one minute uh, kill claim against the virus, um, but it's not a bad idea because it's chlorine based to wipe that surface down after one minute. But it's one minute versus ten minutes. You know, it's a huge substantial savings for that um, amount of time. But again, read your label, know what you're using, make sure it's safe for for kids to be around, and all that kind of good stuff. Bill, you look like you're going to say something. Yeah, let me add to that. I think the, the important thing here is in the bus business, and a lot of us have been in it a long time, you know, we know how to like clean the bus for appearance, if you will, okay? We're, we're at a different phase where we need to disinfect the bus. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Governor Cuomo said a day or two ago that, you know, regarding the subway trains and the rail system, he said they've never been cleaner. This is this is where we ought to be anyway, right? So. But the point is we're taking our bus cleaning to another level and we need to rely on people who know uh, how to do this. And then you have to look at the training piece that comes in. Uh, Jason mentioned that the bus has been cleaned, maybe it's been disinfected, it's in the, in the bus yard and we have the mechanic that goes and gets that to bring it in for a, a, a ticket, a defect repair. You know, how we how do we close that loop again then? Do, do we spray disinfect again? So. This is where people like Jeff can help steer us and guide us. They've been doing this for quite some time within our buildings and with the students. So I think that um, that said, we also have a lot of our directors of facilities and head custodians that are very knowledgeable and have been trained by people like Jeff on how to use these products. So we aligned our transportation department with our facilities department and we're using the same products, following the protocols, and uh, the only difference is that we'll be doing some of that work ourselves. We're going to do a two-step where the driver would be responsible for the clean, and then we'll have another team that would be uh, handling the, the disinfecting. So, um, But I think that's important to know is that you really need to partner with people and, and turn to your facilities department because they do this day in and day out. Okay. Um, I'm going to shout out to Kristen. Kristen, are you there? You got any questions that um, people want to address here from our expert panelists here? I do, yes. So I'm going to tie in Rich and Jim's question as they were weaved from the same cloth. Uh, are we allowed to use hospital grade cleaner in a school application and schools are required to use green cleaning products. Has there been any insight regarding those two concepts? Uh, I'll take that one. Um, yes, schools can use a hospital grade disinfectant. Um, in terms of the Green Seal certification products for your general purpose cleaning, uh, back, I want to say it was maybe 2012-ish, um, there was a green initiative put out by the state um, and where, where possible, you have to use a green product. Um, but again, if you want any type of disinfection done, number one state of uh, a green product is it cannot kill anything. So a green product can never be a disinfectant. 
So they've loosened that stronghold about a lot to allow for disinfectants to be used within school districts as long as they're utilized properly with proper training and proper procedures. Is there a concern about the warm weather? Um, is that you have to do something differently when it's warm versus cold weather? Um, I wouldn't say it's COVID related because it's a, it's a virus. When you talk about warm weather and humidity, uh, there's a lot of different things that can play a part, especially when you're utilizing any type of cleaning chemical, um, making sure the bus is cooled down as best as possible. What happens when I'm starting to spray chemical in a, you know, 85% humidity is it's going to, you know, release into the air more. You're going to jam up the oxygen that's in the air with whatever you're spraying. Um, especially if you're using a any type of mister based product or even, you know, which always recommended if you're using a bottle and trigger to use a core spray um, and not a mist. So you're not missing that into the air and inhaling it if you're utilizing it, if you're the cleaner or the person doing the work. So, um, but in terms of heat in general, humidity is the bigger killer for growth of fungus and stuff. Uh, making sure you're checking your, your corners for mold. Um, mold removal is a lot different than, you know, killing bacteria. So, Just yeah, to Oop, Jeff, we have one more question I think would tie into this perfectly. Can you explain the difference between cleaning and disinfecting? You mentioned both of those terms earlier. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. This is a, I love this one. This is, a, this is one that always the, the kind of big misconception. They're completely separate, and I try and talk about them differently. Um, cleaning is the removal of germs and soil off of a surface. Disinfecting is the killing of germs on a surface over a certain amount of time. So think of it just like washing your hands. It's always recommended to wash your hands, which is basically cleaning your hands, using a soap for 20 seconds with warm water, doesn't need to be hot, um, and then drying with a paper towel. Sanitizing is the exact same thing, is I'm sanitizing my hands um, right there, hoping to kill the germs that are there. Same premise happens with disinfection as hand sanitizer. If my hands are visibly soiled, that um, hand sanitizer in this term is disinfectant is not getting to actually my skin where there could be other germs hiding underneath that soiled layer. So that's why it's always recommended and that's why there's a pre-clean and a lot of chemical usage that don't have cleaners or what we call surfactants in them to remove that soil and move that soil around to allow the contact time for the, for the disinfectant to actually work. Very good. Jason, um, do you guys need special training on cleaning? They hire you guys hire someone like a Jeffrey to to do the trainings, or is there some special? So, so for the most part, and I'm just speaking for just some of the districts that I've talked to, some of the heavy mechanics, a lot of them uh, we're being trained right here on the ground. Uh, we're being trained by facilities. We're being trained. They're coming in and telling us, okay, this is the dwell time or the wet time is uh, Jeffrey's telling us that needs to be in. Um, and then we're going from transportation supervisors down, just saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. And right now we're doing webinars for the district and we're saying, okay, this is what we're going to do from here on out. If you guys want to come in and try it, we can come in and try this. Um, you know, we're just trying to make sure that everybody gets trained, but we want to make sure they get trained the proper way. And uh, that's, that's the most important because when we first started this, when this first came around, we had uh, numerous products that we had and we were, some of the drivers would use uh, they have a spray bottle and they'd use half a spray bottle on a bus. And in theory, you really, you only need to use a spray pattern if you are using, you're just misting. I mean, that's, and Jeff probably could touch base on that, but some of it's a mist, some of it's, you know, some drivers didn't know. Is it a, you put the whole bottle on one seat and then you go for another bottle. But one of the questions I had, and I wanted to ask Jeff real quick. So a lot of these are uh, water-based. So you are mixing them with water because it's not, a, you know, it's not pure. We have New York weather here. We have 10 below, we have 20 below, we have wind chills. I mean, I've got almost 100 buses sitting outside between the two. What are we doing for freezing temperatures? Do districts need to make sure they have a space that there's bottles put inside a hallway? Are they gonna be all right to adapt with the freezing temperature and then be used when they warm? Good question. Uh, that, is a, that is a fantastic question. I wouldn't leave the chemical on the bus, whether it's a, um, a bottle, a quart bottle of something or a wipe. If that action, action freezes um, and then thaws again, you can lose efficacy, especially if it's a disinfectant. Um, I, I would recommend it in terms of, a, you know, if they are mixed with water. Uh, just you can have, you know, there's many different what we call dilution control stations. So you buy a concentrate of the product, have it set up in your shop, 
you just mix it right out of the, of the unit. What we don't want is um, our teams mixing the chemical on their own um, because someone's one ounce to a gallon is different than my one ounce to a gallon. So we want to make sure they get the proper disinfectant every time. Uh, there is a certain ratio for talking disinfectants about it. it is most effective to work and that's on the label. Um, but I would have a space inside for your for your collection of, of products uh, on hand to, to remain temperature controlled would be the answer to your question. Just to go back to training a little bit, who's, yeah. who's the best resource for, and this is a panel question, if I'm a school district transportation supervisor and I need to get myself and my people trained, who's the best resource to go to? Well, am I allowed to say, am I allowed to say Hilliard? Let me that we've been faced with this problem, but I will tell you two sources. Number one, somebody like Jeff at Hilliard, because a lot of times, the whoever your supplier is for your, for your facilities department, and I know because among other things, I ran facilities for a period of time at our district and worked with Jeff uh, heavily there, but also they come in and train the custodians and show the proper way to use products and things like that. So you can rely on your vendor certainly for the training. And then also the, uh, the BOCES, like in our area, the, the Genesee Valley BOCES, they have specialists that can assist in training on uh, the use of these products. And, and uh, so I would say those two sources, your BOCES rep, uh, usually a health and safety rep, and they have specialists there or a vendor uh, representative such as Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say Bose is a good answer to that too. They're 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 pretty good about that. Um, and just make sure whatever you're doing, if it's a, make sure it's a training. Um, I talked to a lot of customers in a lot of school districts out there, and they say, "Yeah, I get a training. They came and showed me a new product. That's that's not training. Um, my trainings, whether this is just me personally, I don't I don't talk product, especially if it's a new customer that I'm going in and, and meeting with the very first time." Because I can just talk multi-purpose cleaners, disinfectants, the greasers, if, you know, if you have it. It can be generic. It's educating people like I'm trying to do here on how to utilize those products appropriately to make sure we clean for health and we keep things looking at, at best appearance. So that would be my two, you know, two cents. Also, CDC has great guidelines. Our, our company follows CDC guidelines as best we can. So. I'm going to um, put you on the spot, Jeff. Um, do you have like guidelines? So when we, we post all these things up on our best practices website um, yeah. on transfer.com and it's, um, it's just been a growing archive of really useful content. Um, do you have a fact sheet or some other things that we could include offline on our site? Because uh, I feel like we're just yep. skimming the surface. A nice topic to use. Skimming, cleaning yeah. the surface a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, but can you give us some like, offline yeah for sure we can definitely connect offline and we can get you all the information uh, you need I'd you know um, be, be glad to help you out we uh, if you're if anybody or talk to your business officials they see a blurb about Hilliard on their on their website once a week we always put stuff out we are connected with us so pretty heavily and uh, as well as that's with the facilities director so so I a couple quick questions on the, uh, one is on, on the website under resources are the uh, cleaning protocols from the three major bus vendors. Uh, oh. You might want to res uh, resource those if you if you need them. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Sorry, yep. Bill, I'm, were you going to say something? I, I want to go back to the cold weather thing, if I could, and I'd like to ask Jeff. Uh, Dave and I talked about this the other day, what our, our cleaning, disinfecting looks like, you know, in, in uh, September, October, and some in November, and then in maybe April, May, June looks quite a bit different. Jeff, uh, Jason hit on this when he talked about the cold temperatures. We have days where our, you know, it's below zero overnight, our high is eight. So now I bring that bus back at the end of the day, at the end of the shift. Do I have to bring that bus in to bring it up to, let's say, ambient temperature in the building in order to do a proper clean and disinfect or, you know, because they, they don't warm up well, right? So you never get super warm in a bus but they sure cool down fast as well, right? So um, a bus could sit out there for an hour before I go out to, to clean or disinfect it, and it may be back to you know, 12 degrees in there. Can I do work in that temperature, or do I need shop space? That's an excellent question, and I'll, I, you could clean in that space, 
I don't know the answer of a temperature of a surface, it, what the efficacy is for a disinfectant to sit on there. So you may have stumped me on that one. I would guess it wouldn't matter as long as the chemical hasn't been frozen and would still work and the, it's still a hard surface. Um, my suggestion and my answer would be yes, that would be fine, but I will fact check that one and see if there's a temperature for the actual surface to have to be to have the chemical actually work on it. But that's a good question. This may Great. sound like a little bit of a simplistic question, but uh, two things. One is, because um, I think people are also concerned about supply of, um, of the proper cleaners and that kind of thing. But can you just simply use what's in the school's cleaners in the bus or whatever the twain shall yeah, there's no, there's Yes, there's no difference. If they can share with you in, in these times of supply chain issues that everybody across the country is having, um, yes. There's no difference. We will if if you're already doing business with Hilliard, we're not going to recommend different products in the buses. You know, we might recommend different techniques and different different procedures in terms of timing when you will do something, but the products will be the same. Different procedures. Hey Jeff, okay. the uh, recommendations from the bus vendors are very specific, which you could put on a seat so it doesn't deteriorate the seat material. I'm guessing you probably know all about that because you've been working with Bill, but. Is, is there a difference with any kind of a school disinfecting supply? That, would that be a problem or does it meet that 70%? Uh, uh, I think it's uh, alcohol or, you know, does it, does it, uh, my, my question is, is any school cleaner okay or is it specific school cleaners that you should be looking at? I guess I would, I would have to see the, the label of the, of the boss in terms of what they don't like on it, whether it's an acid or, or what. Uh, most of our disinfectants in terms of our terms, are made with quaternary ammonia. They dilute it pretty much neutral. Um, yeah. You get into a caustic bleach that's not diluted properly. You could have issues. Um, even what Bill's using in a chlorine-based solution is, is non-toxic. I can spray myself. I can spray my clothes, and I won't bleach out. Um, so, and that's a chlorine-based, but it's not bleach. It's more of a pool chlorine versus a bleach chlorine. Yeah. Um, a little bit different premise. But again, read your label. Make sure it's not caustic. Um, and then always, I, I would definitely reference the manufacturer of the bus. You, again, that's something I'm exactly new with as well, and that's something I'm just learning and kind of handling. So, so I know Rick is going to cut us off here soon because he's got a time. He's got time, but I got to yes. ask this question, and I'll be quiet. Uh, oh, go ahead. How often are you guys deep cleaning? Do you do that every day, once a week? What's the recommended recommended time frame for that? Because that's a big process, right? A lot of times involved. In I'm sorry, were you asking me, Dave, or were you asking Jason? Whoever can answer. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead Bill. No, go ahead, Bill. All right. Uh, to me, um, I think the deep clean, I don't know, I guess you'd have to define deep clean. I, I will tell you that my game plan for cleaning is um, when and if possible, and this follows directly along with CDC guidelines for transit operation cleaning, when and if possible in between uh runs or at layover points and then i'm i believe we're going to do at a minimum we're going to do a, a wipe down of uh touch points and um disinfecting so I, I a deep clean i guess a deep clean to me is where you flip up all the seats on the school bus and clean out everything in between and so i would say where we've done that kind of on an annual basis that will happen probably quarterly um, that's my my thoughts on that. But and for this purpose, a deep clean, I'm going to say will happen at a minimum once a day, and I'm thinking twice a day, after the morning shift and after the afternoon shift. So each bus needs to be cleaned and disinfected entirely twice a day. I think it's very important in order for us to resume service, gain the confidence and ridership back, and ensure the safety of our staff and our students that we have a very strict protocol on the cleaning and uh, when it's done. So I'm, you know, a deep clean, I guess, to me would be, as I said, flipping the seats up. Um, but I'm going to say we do a thorough clean, disinfect in a minimum once a day, which is what's required or suggested by CDC. But my plan is to do it twice a day after each shift. Did you want to see like a are you seeing like a clipboard or something where like it's being check marked so you can see like oh, I can walk by and say, okay, yep, you did your second cleaning today, that kind of thing? Yeah, and I think 
you know, Rick, you mentioned that's basically compliance, right? How do we know? We can say that we're doing something, but are we doing it? Especially when you have 50 or 60 different people that you're relying on to do it and, and their their standard of clean may, may vary from to each end of the scale, right? So I think there's gonna be a compliance piece here where we need to spot check, we need to be watching what's going on. And then um, the presumption will be that the, the bus is cleaned every day and then and we're gonna have to, uh, basically follow up and through being out there, having supervisors out there to make sure this work is indeed being done. Jason, what are your thoughts on So you guys, I, I wanted to bring this up in the beginning, but I wasn't sure when we were gonna talk about it. So Bill really let it off well as how we need to get these buses cleaned when we do it and how we do it. One thing we, we haven't touched base on, which I think is probably one of the most important things on this whole webinar, um, we have buses, 65 passengers. We're using expedite. We're using vehicles, SUVs now to transfer food back and forth for these uh, kids that don't have anything to eat. We haven't talked about changing the filters. Um, we have great uh, chemicals that we're spraying in the buses that were the dwell time, the wet time, as Jeff is saying. But one thing we're not talking about: we need to make sure all the filters are cleaned on the buses. We have five, six different seat filters on these buses. We have drivers' filters. We have uh, stairwell filters. That's something that we really need to touch base on. I'm hoping all districts, and I, I'm gonna have something with our head mechanics thing as well, that we touch base on letting everyone know. I know a lot of districts change them in the fall. I think we need to change them this summer. And if we have buses running this summer, or we have vehicles, as I said earlier, about food services, we need to change the cabin filters for these vehicles, whether they're vans, trucks, cars, um, the chemicals that we're spraying or the stuff that we're spraying for the, the dwell in the wet time, that's doing great. But it's the it's the people with their breathing back and forth that's getting caught with a cabin filter and getting with the seat filters. If we don't get this changed, and we might have to change these again come at the middle of fall. If we start school in September, October, we wanna make sure these filters are changed. And I think districts need to, and contractors need to say, okay, let's get a stockpile of these so we're ready to get these changed because that way we can do, we can say we've done everything we can. Hey, Jason, quick question for you to put you on the spot like I did with the Jeff. Do you have guidelines already that you put together that we could include? Because I think that's a really valid point you just raised. So right now, I mean, with most mechanics in the state and, you know, and, and a lot of you guys can also push on this. I know Bill can too. We have certain things. So push COVID aside, this is what we do every year, our summer maintenance program. We all have our own summer maintenance program. So now COVID's came along and now we're trying to think, okay, what is best gonna fit our district's needs? So Bill's needs might be different than mine. Um, and the, the gentleman next door and the school district up the road a little ways. So we are strengthening our service needs as in making sure that the vehicles are cleaned on a daily basis. Any vehicle that moves needs to be cleaned. We have the proper uh, stuff to spray, the things that our district has approved for us to spray. We clean the vehicles day in, day out. After a couple weeks of service, I will be pulling the cabin filters. We have drivers in them. We have one driver in some vehicles. They may take their mask off. Uh, for some odd reason, he's sick one day and we have another driver getting that vehicle. I wanna make sure we have these things changed. And the toughest part is, is our budgets. We all have a budget. And uh, I know transportation right now is, we're gonna feel some pain here shortly. And I wanna make sure that everybody knows if you can get it now. Uh, because time is changing and we want to make sure we have stuff on the shelf before all of a sudden they take 20% off our budget and it can happen. That's a great point. That's a great point. Guys, um, this time we're, we're going to, I can't believe how I knew the time was going to go by fast. Um, I want to give you all an opportunity to kind of give one takeaway um, because I think it's, you probably all have something that um, everybody should be uh, to gravitate toward. So I'm just going to start, and Dave, David, I'm going to end with you. So we're gonna go Bill, Jeff, and Jason. If you could kind of give one key takeaway that you want attendees to have as a, uh, maybe they go back to their superintendent or their transportation supervisor, what do you want them to, to take with them? I would say that like so many other aspects of this, our response to this uh, pandemic is to develop a plan, have partners that know what they're doing that they can advise you and as Jason just said, get your products. I, I feel very comfortable now that I have ordered all my products, everything I need to start school is ordered, everything from wipes to cleaners, to masks, to gloves, it's all done. Um, so get on that, but uh, 
part, partner with somebody that can guide you and teach you the right way so you can share that with your staff. Partnership, very good. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, again, thank you for letting me be on. And I think my takeaway is I, this is gonna be a different realm or world for the transportation departments to start to live in and move towards already what a lot of the facilities around the state are doing. Um, I would focus on your process and your procedures um, and make sure again that you're looking to educate yourself as best as possible um, and you know again partner with somebody that you trust you know in giving you that proper information uh, it's not a, just a one-off sale that you're looking to build a business relationship with somebody um, to educate your team and making sure you have all the uh, support and information possible so thanks again good. that's very good Jeff thank you Jason um, I'm going to make it real quick. Two things. One thing on a, a comical sense, sometimes we need this friendship. Be best friends with your business manager because you need to get things bought. Um, two, preventive maintenance. That's that's my deal. Um, that's every mechanic that might be listening to this, every head mechanic, every service manager, even supervisors. Uh, preventive maintenance. We are one of the best in the country, and I will stake that claim any day of the week. Um, for New York, we do everything we can and by gosh it shows in our records so preventive maintenance is that's the key we just have to up it a little bit an ounce of prevention that's right, right. Yeah, david absolutely. well i'm trying to figure out something profound to say here but you've all said it uh yeah i've been thinking about this first phrase the, the new normal and uh I, i'm not sure i'm going to quite I'm, I'm not sure i'm going to say that anymore because uh, i'm not sure what we're going through right now is going to be our normal i think we're going to improve some of our uh, processes we're going to keep our buses cleaner we're going to think about our health more often uh but we're going to run buses at some point in time you know we're, this is this is we're going to turn the corner on this and we're going to see the yellow buses going up down the road because our communities depend on that and there's no question in my mind that we're going to fix this problem. Uh, going through some bumps and some uncertainties right now, trying to figure some things, some things out. But as you sit through these webinars, uh, we're figuring this stuff out. I mean, there's some, there's people on the ground who's coming up with uh, some great ideas on how to solve these problems. And uh, it's just a matter of time where our health expert, experts are going to get this thing you know, in a better place for us. And as far as what we're doing as school transportation professionals is what you're doing. Uh, it, it's it's gonna come together and uh, we're gonna be at a different point in our, our, our uh, lives and our professions, but uh, I'm not sure the uncertainty and the problems that we're facing right now are going to be our normal. We're going to, we're gonna fix this. And uh, I'm, I'm very confident. I think that's what, that's what we do. So uh, I wanna thank all of you uh, for, for being here today. It was, uh, very educational. I had to think to myself when we put this together, we could be able to talk for an hour about cleaning buses, and we did. Quite honestly, we could have gone on and on. But, uh, I think thank you Jeff alone could have gone on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's good. good I, I easily could have. Easily. Uh, I um, just want to take, highlight real quickly uh, the takeaways. Again, partnership. Partner with someone you can trust and guide you. Focus on processes and procedures. You know, try to educate yourself, which is really good. Friends, be best friends with your business manager. I remember watching MASH. You know, they always had to make friends with the guy that's going to get them the supplies they need. So, and preventative maintenance. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Jason, Jonathan, Jeff, Bill, David. Uh, what a great discussion, as David just said. Um, David, I want to thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, we're at Ground Zero in New York State, and you and uh, Nayab have been just uh, tremendous uh, leaders in this very challenging time. I wanna encourage everybody, as David said, we meet every other week. So mark your calendars for Thursday, June 11th for the next uh, NIAP TransFinder webinar, again at one o'clock. Uh, I wanna to mention, Tony had mentioned StopFinder communication app, which is gonna be free now for the remainder of the school year. I mean, for the remainder of the calendar year. Um, so if you want to have, uh, have that in your hand, do you want to be a client or anything like that? It's for any district. In North America, just to email free stop finder at transfinder.com. And finally, um, as we've talked about, we all learn from each other. And so we are seeking as many stories as possible from any district that can give guidance on best practices. People learn things 
and they and they are readily sharing them. And I think that's where we put them in our best practices page, which you can find off of transfinder.com. So if you have a story, you have a, a solution that's working for you, you might make yourself, uh, you might become part of our next webinar. Uh, just send an email to mystory@transfinder.com, and I just want to again thank our panelists. I want to thank all of our attendees, um, the great questions we received, and uh, it will be on our uh, best practices page this recording, so you can have access to it. And um, again, thanks again, and I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you so Take much. Care.